In earlier videos, we've looked at some of the bonding mechanisms that are in place between different atoms of different materials. So we've looked at ionic bonding, covalent bonding, metallic bonding, and intermolecular forces. What we're going to look at now is how the atoms and molecules actually arrange themselves within a piece of material. So let's begin on the left hand side where we have a regular structure and regular structures are called crystalline. Now regular crystalline structures appear in our metals and in our video on metallic bonding we looked at the reasons why the metal ions in a piece of material are able to be closely packed or densely packed in the piece of material. So the left hand side here, regular crystalline structures, relates to metals. On the right hand side we've got irregular amorphous materials and amorphous really means without form. So in amorphous materials there's no obvious arrangement of the molecules within the material. We saw this in the case of silicon carbide when we looked at covalent networks and what I've drawn here would represent silicon oxide, SiO2. And what we see here is for every silicon shaded in black, we have two oxygens shown in white here. Now because we have a complex covalent network here and bonds are free to rotate, there's no obvious or logical arrangement of these atoms. Now what we're interested in here is how this affects the properties of our material. We've talked about the fact that metals tend to be malleable, ductile, tough, and all of these properties relate to atoms being able to move easily across each other. If atoms can slide and move over each other, then a piece of material can be shaped or formed. Now if we look at our diagram on the left, I want you to imagine that I apply a force here, and I apply a force here, and I apply an opposing force here. Because our metal ions are aligned, what we're going to get is we're going to get planes here and here where the material layers can effectively slide over each other. And we'll look at this in a bit more detail in a moment. If we apply that thinking to our irregular or amorphous material, then what we see is there's no obvious planes of movement. The material on the right would certainly not be malleable or ductile. In fact, it would be very rigid, brittle and hard. So when we think particularly about mechanical properties of malleability, ductility, toughness and hardness, the easiest way to think about these is in relation to how easily molecules slide over each other. So just to reiterate, our metals on the left, where atoms slide easily over each other, would tend to be soft, malleable, meaning they can be formed, tough, meaning they can absorb impact, and ductile, meaning they can be drawn into wire. Conversely, our ceramics, as seen on the right hand side with an irregular amorphous structure, are very strong, we've got these complex networks of covalent bonds, but they have very low malleability and ductility. They're very hard and they're very brittle. If you was to strike this with an impact force, because there's no obvious layers to slide over each other, the material would fracture. Breaking one bond would cause a ripple effect through the material. So now let's focus on our regular crystalline structure which is present in metals. So what we're looking at here is the information sheet for this learning outcome, and we've got two different types of crystalline structure pictured. We have one that's called body center cubic, BCC, and we have one that's face center cubic. Now these two structures vary in property. I know that we've said all metals are malleable, ductile, tough, and soft, and that's true when compared to things such as our ceramics, but there's obviously different grades of hardness, toughness, malleability and ductility that exists within our metals. Now there are other structures, but these are the two that we're gonna focus on for the purpose of this video. On the left hand side, we have BCC materials. So some of our body center cubic metals are iron at room temperature. And another good example is titanium. And some of our face centre cubic materials are things such as copper, aluminium, and so on. Now when we compare these two, what we find is that face centre cubic materials actually have higher malleability. They're more malleable, they're softer, and they're more ductile 
Whereas our body centre cubic, our ions and our titaniums tend to be less malleable, less ductile and harder. Now, if we think about the things we spoke about earlier, what we talked about was malleability is a property where material atoms or molecules can slide easily over each other. The easier those molecules can slide, the more malleable and ductile that material is. So pictured at the bottom of the screen, I have models of each of these crystalline structures. We have, first of all, face centre cubic on the right, and we see pictured here, a white atom or molecule sitting at the centre of the face. And if we look at the top surface, again, we see a molecule or atom positioned at the centre of the face. When we look at our body centre cubic structure, we see that there's actually an atom sat at the centre of a cube. Not on the centre of the face, but on the centre of the cube. So here we have a cube represented. And there's an atom sat at the centre. Now I want you to try to visualise what would happen if I tried to pull the top layer and the bottom layer in this direction and the middle layer in this direction on the face centre cubic material. What you notice is there's more separation between the layers. In actual fact, these layers would slide much more easily across each other. The easier the molecule will slide, the more soft, malleable and ductile the material is. Let's compare that to our body centre cubic material. Now, on our body centre cubic material, we're going to try to pull the top and bottom layers in this direction, and this middle layer, we're going to try to pull in this direction. Now, what you can see here is there's much more overlap of the atoms. I like to think of it as being more interlocked. Well, if it's more interlocked, it's going to be more difficult to slide these layers. As I try to slide the middle layer from the top and bottom layer here, it's going to be much more difficult. It will slide, but it's going to be more difficult than in the instance with the FCC material. So relatively speaking, we think of body centre cubic materials as being hard and potentially more brittle than face centre cubic materials. Whereas when we think of face centre cubic materials, we think of them as being softer. We think of them as being malleable ductile and tough. Now I have to reiterate that we're talking relatively here. We're talking about FCC relative to BCC. Whereas when we talk about crystalline structures in general, they tend to be soft, malleable and ductile, particularly when compared to our amorphous ceramic materials. Now the last thing that's worth mentioning in relation to atomic arrangement is how alloys are formed. And we have two different types of alloy. We have something called an interstitial alloy and we have something called a substitutional alloy. And a good example of an interstitial alloy is steel. And steel is the combination of iron and carbon. Now, as we just learned, steel is a body centre cubic structure. And body centre cubic structures tend to be less tightly packed than face centre cubic structures. There's more free space for atoms. So when we form an alloy between iron and carbon, what the carbon atoms do is they actually sit in between the iron atoms. So here we have carbon, shown in blue, and here we have iron, shown in black. So the carbon atoms sit in between the spaces. I want you to imagine again that we're going to try to pull the top and bottom layers in one direction and the middle layer in the other direction. Now hopefully what you can see is with those carbon atoms in place, we've got a greater degree of interlocking. It's actually going to be harder to slide those two layers over each other. You notice that I haven't filled all of the gaps with carbon. This might represent a steel with a relatively low carbon content, but we could always increase the carbon content. High carbon steel would have a greater number of carbon atoms, therefore greater interlocking. Now coming back to this idea of how the properties are affected by how easily the layers slide over each other, hopefully you can recognise here that as we increase the carbon content, we're going to see the hardness of the material increase, and we're also going to see its brittleness increase relative to the pure iron. Now on the right we have what's called a substitutional alloy. And a good example of a substitutional alloy would be brass. Now brass is made up of copper, 
and zinc. So we might see here the black atoms representing copper and the blue representing zinc. Now the big difference here is brass is face centre cubic. There's less space within the metal structure to allow new materials to be inputted. So instead what happens is the zinc atoms or zinc ions in the metallic bond replace copper ions. They substitute them. Now because of the different relative sizes of a copper atom and a zinc atom, or a copper ion and a zinc ion, what we end up with is a disruption of the structure as we see there. So originally we had a nice neat line here. We had a nice neat line here which is no longer neat. And we've got our third line here which again has been distorted. So now imagine what happens when we try to pull the top and bottom layers left and the middle layer right it's going to be a lot more difficult for those layers to slide over each other. Again, what we see in the case of a substitutional alloy is an increase in hardness and an increase in brittleness. The properties of malleability, ductility and toughness are going to be reduced. So just to recap, we've seen here how the structure of the material and how easily the planes of the material slide affect the properties of the material. We've seen how metals have a neat crystalline structure which leads them being soft, malleable and ductile, but we've seen the effect that alloying can have on those properties, reducing malleability and ductility and increasing brittleness and hardness. The reason being because the planes of the material no longer slide as easily over one another.